Let me ask you, what is the difference between secession and independence? Uh, you, you take exception to the word secession, right? Well, secession is a creature of the 19th century and specifically the Civil War and specifically um, uh, slave states not wanting um, the federal government at that point to tell them what they may or may not do with their property. Um, so they seceded. Uh, the, the kind of secession, uh, which I, again is a, is a racist term as far as I'm concerned, uh, and a term which should have been forgotten, it should have, been, it should have died in the 19th century. I prefer the word independence. Um, there, there are two steps to achieving independence, and I'll talk about Vermont in a, in a second. The first one is understanding the monster that hates us, which is the U.S. government, and, and rev reviling that entire institution and all of their puppet strings that go down the parties, the party lines, right into the state houses of all the states. And to see them as the enemy they are against us. And once you're able to do that, which is kind of a big gulp, and to see that, that the government has become the sovereign over the people, which is not how this country is, was designed. We, the people, are the sovereign. We govern through representatives, not representatives gather, govern uh, by collecting votes from us. It's the wrong attitude. That's what they want us to think. Well, um, to, we need to see individually how, how evil this situation is, how out of control the federal government is, and the two parties, which essentially are the, is the federal government, it's a creature of the federal government essentially, um, because it all works together to create this misery that they're uh, you know, still pulling out of their hats. And then, and only then, can we as people uh, begin to figure out how we're going to be independent of the federal government. You can do it through not paying taxes, you can do it through supporting um, uh, your state, declaring its independence uh, as superior to the federal government, which is, is not a big leap. I think uh, probably 95% of the people of, the United, of Vermont already think the state of Vermont is superior to the rest of the United States. It's not a big leap to take to say, okay, well, why don't, why don't we be our own country? So if you're uh, and I would, I would say that this is, should not just be a Vermont thing. It should be n national. I'm not saying we need to be fragmented into, into 50 new little Balkan states. I wouldn't get that far. I would say that if Vermont declared independence and if other states declared independence from the federal government, the federal government would collapse. It would just cease like, to exist. Just like the Soviet Union did when uh, Estonia and Latvia and Very Lithuania. Good. Very good analogy. Absolutely. Exactly. And I don't think there would be tanks in the street. In fact, I'm confident there wouldn't be because they're all over in Asia. They don't have, the, they don't have any here. I mean, they have some here. I take that back. They do have a lot here. But I do not believe that their threat, they, that they have created, uh, our fear of them would be used to stop us. I think the collapse would be of the federal government, which would be the best thing that could happen to us, would um, and the world, um, before they kill us and it, because they're run by a, a basically a lot of uh, Christian um, evangelists in the Pentagon uh, who are running amok around the world, uh, destroying the earth to wait for Jesus, and many of them say it. There's even a guy in Vermont running who told me that. Uh, as a Republican. He's running as a Republican. Uh, his first name is Paul. Uh, he's running, um, I forgot what for what office, but at any rate, somewhere out of um, uh, St. Albans or something. Anyway, um, they, they want the return of Jesus and they want to re destroy the earth. They don't want a, because that's the way they get to heaven and the rapture and all this nonsense. Uh, that they're that they're uh, you know on the rampage creating is public policy, um, kill and destroy and let God sort it out. That's their sort of attitude. Um, it's just nothing but evil. Well, um, 
all of that needs to end before it kills us. And we become total slaves, even though we, we are becoming more like that all the time. We're not slaves, not yet. There's nothing to chain me to this chair, right? But there are policies that forbid citizens to get a handle on their government. And that's what need, we need to break those chains. But as a historian, you must be familiar with the concept of wage slavery. Yes, exactly. There's a perfect example of how we are enslaved, but it's not clear cut. It's not as clear cut as slavery per se. Capitalism itself can be defined as a form of slavery. That's to me a, um, a conceptual argument or debate. Our capitalist overlords have the, the money and they can control us through work. And if we, if we refuse, uh, that becomes a crime and we are in prison with the uh, chains. Yeah, I, I am for a, not a free market because that's, that's basically the slave market which is to say corporations do anything they want and crush little corporations, the big ones. That's the free market. I'm for a fair market, which is um, uh, money is regulated. I, I don't like, you know, and power is regulated because power is money, money is power. You don't want to concentrate money in titanic, monolithic, uh, institutions like the U.S. military. You do not want to concentrate power in uh, the banks on Wall Street that suck our bone marrow and then don't give us loans. I mean, it boggles my mind that we are so accepting of this kind of tyranny, and it is tyranny. But are we slaves? Well, not per se, because we could rise up and we don't. And we don't have to rise up and shoot. In fact, that'd be the dumbest thing we could do. We just have to rise up and declare our independence from all of this evil and say we're not going to be part of it anymore. We're going to organize our own system, our own way, the way we want it, the way it kind of used to be but isn't anymore. And it's not going to be again until we do that. We can do that, so we're not, we're not enslaved. We're not being stopped from doing it. We're stopping ourselves. In fact, a good way to put it is that we're enslaving ourselves. We're allowing ourselves to be to feel powerless, and we're not. We could act. Anybody in the, in the in this state could say everything I've just said, and then take action on it. You know, uh, uh, just disavow the federal government. Disavow it. It's it has overthrown. The government has been overthrown by the government. We the people are the government. Ergo, they have overthrown us. The well, act of, of treason has already occurred. We are not the traitors. The government is the traitors. Some of the things that you're saying are rather scary. Uh, now, it was reassuring to me that you said uh, it would be very stupid and bad to, to uh, resort to violence. Absolutely. Uh, but on the other hand, you're, you're you seem to be advocating individual action against the federal government, which would turn out to be a crime and result in... In All done nonviolently. We, we have the template. It worked in the civil rights era. It achieved, it moved mountains. And we have pretended to forget it. It's King's lessons from Gandhi. King changed this country without raising a fist, without lifting a finger in anger. We could do the same thing. There's nothing stopping us except ourselves. Well, that's, that's an important point that uh, everything you're advocating is uh, you're advocating nonviolent action. Absolutely. In the, in the, after the pattern of uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Martin Luther King. And we're not utilizing it. No. Uh, if, if, let, me, let me make this very clear. If we fire any shots in anger, we're done. They will crush us. We no. can't win that way. See, I think we know that. I think that's one of the reasons none of it's happened. You know, the, 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 the guns that are supposedly protecting the country that are in all those drawers and homes, this is fiction. Those guns are worthless. If they were used, that would be the end of freedom. That, they would crush us. So the guns themselves are being used as kind of a, a almost a religious uh, object. So long as I have my gun, I'm safe. I've got to keep the federal government at bay. So long as they aren't taking my gun, I'm okay. No, you're not, because they've destroyed your constitution and you still got your damn gun. 
you know, you can't use the gun to stop them because they'll crush you because their guns are like this big and our guns are this big. So guns are worthless in this argument, but they've created this myth that many of us unfortunately have swallowed that guns protect liberty. They don't. Guns are destroying liberty. They're destroying the life abroad with our guns and they're doing nothing to stop the government here now. The, the gun Second Amendment people are waiting for some kind of federal SWAT team to descend on their house. It's not going to happen. That would be the last thing the government would do. They're not stupid. They don't want to cause a, an uprising of uh, people with guns all over the country. They want those people to be docile. So the last thing they're going to do is want to take away this stupid, worthless gun. 